Hello guys, this is the Booty Warrior, and welcome back to StarCraft 2. Now, in order to really illustrate how you should be playing the game, I went ahead and I did a booty versus hard AI, very hard AI, as you can see there. I'm fucking hardcore like that. But yeah, just a Protoss versus Terran. Before we jump into a real game, and to be honest, the AI in this game is probably gonna give you a harder experience than where you're gonna be seeing like bronze and silver. Aside from, like, I guess, cheese strategies, but... What I want to illustrate is... Generally speaking, I think you should try to mimic what I do here. It doesn't have to be verbatim. You don't have to make the exact same structures, necessarily. But... The idea is what's important. And yes, I got a new icon. I got a few different icons. And that is... Marceline. The Vampire Queen. Uh, they got, like, a new Adventure Time show on, I believe, HBO Max. I need to see it. I keep telling myself to see it. But, it's hard to find time for it. I don't really watch TV shows too much. But anyway. Yeah, that was just a slight rally error. And you know what? Don't be afraid of failure, is what I want to tell you guys. Now... My timings are slightly off here. It doesn't matter. This is like my first game of the day, okay? The point is, 16 gateway, and you get pylon, like, right before you get capped out on the first part of the game. And I go for 17 gas here. The thing about StarCraft, in general, is it's not as simple as, oh, if you just perfect this build order, or you, you do this exact thing and have these buildings at this exact time and all that, then you'll be able to win. <clears throat> StarCraft is a game, as a multiplayer game, things can play out in very, very, very different ways. And being able to adapt is important, no matter who you are, whether you're Protoss, Terran, or Zerg. Now, the reason we get one gas here is... We don't want to get too much gas early on, because with this build, we're going to focus on trying to expand. And here, we get a Cybo core as soon as the gate is done, and then around 280 minerals here. You can see my cursor. We're going to send down our probe to the natural. And of course, we're setting up our hotkeys ahead of time, like F1, F2, F3, F4. I personally don't recommend using the army units. Um... I mean, it's not terrible, it's just long-term, it's not a good habit to build up, you know? And yeah, on 19 to 20 supply, I grab this pylon, the second pylon, because you want to be able to constantly produce workers here. And if there's going to be a delay, you want it to be as short as possible. The only reason you should not be making probes is if it's, like, actually necessary. So when I go for this 21 Nexus, some players like to get on 20 supply. I like to be a little bit greedier and get as much value out of Chrono Boost as possible. And I want to illustrate real quick. Whenever you start the game, and you're, you're going to hear me say this a lot throughout the series. Do not, I repeat, do not use your first Chrono Boost before you get your first pylon. It will not time out properly and you're going to have wasted your energy because you're going to get supply blocked before your chrono boost runs out. You know, we don't want that. That's bad. And, see, yeah, 18, I decided to get my pylon a little bit earlier than normal. One thing you can do is you can hotkey, you can, like, grab workers, make little boxes, or you can, like, shift-click real quick, whatever you prefer. You can put them on a hotkey, like three or whatever you prefer, and then as soon as the gas geyser is done, you throw them in there. And that can make it a little bit tighter compared to grabbing workers and throwing them in there as soon as it's done. Because if you hotkey three probes ahead of time, because you're not going to be doing much with the hotkeys anyway. As soon as it's done, you just press the hotkey, then you right click them in there, and that's it. You don't have to do it, it's not necessary, but it is like a little micro trick that you can do to like tighten 
the timing of everything. Trying to be as efficient as possible with your timings is important, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And I recommend getting the gas geyser, the second gas, like after your nexus, in general. Because otherwise you're going to bank up more gas than you can reasonably spend. And for the record, this is a build order that I'm going to be doing all the time on low level. And I think it's a good build order to practice. One of the things that I think keeps people in low MMR is they are focused way too much on I gotta all win, I gotta cheese. Protoss and Terran players in particular, sometimes Zerg, but it's mostly Protoss and Terran that are tempted to take this, this route on the ladder. And my mentality on cheese and all-ins when you're trying to learn is, if you get really good at the timings, and you know, you're perfect at like getting this building at that time, and you know, your macro is halfway decent, you could probably make it all the way to diamond just by cheesing and all inning people, but it's not as reliable as learning how to macro. Okay, all ins could get you to diamond, but learning how to macro and learning how to play the mid to late game phase will keep you in diamond. Alright? That's the big meme that I want you to pull from here. And let's continue. And we're not really worried too much about what our opponent is doing. Now, when I play low level, I tend to be pretty greedy about it. Because I'm like, eh, it's low level. Even if they're all winning me, it probably won't fucking matter. Because they can't even, like, make things at decent timings. But if you want to get yourself into the habit of, like, scouting, what you can do is... You send out the probe after you build your gateway. I don't memorize exactly how it all plays out, but I'm pretty sure you can scout most cheeses, one base cheeses, like, early on, just by sending out your probe at that time. Now... Obviously, it's an AI. In a normal PVT, I do not recommend sending your first stalker over here. It's a bad idea. The reason why it's a bad idea is because, like, unless you scout with a probe that tells you that Terran is not going Reaper, which is very hard to check, honestly. Because some Terrans, they'll, like, get a Marine, and then they will get a Reaper. It'll be, like, their second unit. Because, like, what happens if my Stalker comes over here, and, like, assuming this is a human opponent that plays more meta, Reaper gets over here, whoops, I gotta fucking use up Chrono Boost on this now, and miss out on some value in terms of, like, my worker income. Now, I was so focused on that little scouting part, I didn't really go over this, and I should. So we got our buildings going, we got our second gas coming, and right when the Cybo Core is done... I recommend getting your first unit out first. Like, when these two things finish, when the Cyber Core finishes, units, usually a Stalker or an Adept, Adepts are more efficient, but Stalkers can be good at, like, utility defense, you know? As I stated before, they can hold off Reapers, and they're slightly more expensive than an Adept, but they also help deny, like, early Liberator Cheese or Banshee Cheese or something like that. And then as soon as you get your Stalker finished, if you don't have the Minerals for it, just wait until you have 50. Just click on that building. You're going to sit there spamming it until it's ready. And then after that, make sure you're still making workers. Come on, booty. Yep, that's good booty. That's a good booty right there. Okay, good habit. Now, I think I stated earlier, a good habit is when... You're trying to figure out what should I build at what time. Looking at the gas counter in particular is a really good way to know what to do. Because like Stalker, Adept, these are mineral heavy units that will burn through your minerals fast. And assuming you're always making pylons when you need to, and you're making probes constantly, your mineral count should not be that high. And let's look at what I'm looking at. Slow it down. I have 100 gas. The next step is the Robo Bay. Why do we get the Robo Bay as opposed to like a Twilight Council? Why do we get it as opposed to getting additional gateways or, you know, saving up the gas to get more units to defend ourselves? Because at this point, we have not seen any reason to suspect that Terran is going to be doing anything super aggressive 
at the beginning of the game. And, and again, like, even if you are worried about that, that's why you send a probe over here. Lay down your gateway, come over here, and if you're wondering, like, okay, what are the telltale signs of whether I'm getting cheese, whether I'm getting all in? Usually when you see two racks, it can be indicative of aggression. This is obviously a very bizarre bill for my opponent. And I don't know why he's expanding there instead of over here, but there you go. Because, like, usually what a Terran player would do here is get, like, a factory and try to get some tech up, even if he doesn't necessarily plan on playing aggressive. It's something he should do. He's a good... You want to tech up as fast as you can in this game. I think it's a good general habit, with the exception being Zerg. Zerg is more about getting as many drones super fast as you can, getting up as many bases as you can. But when you are playing Protoss and Terran, your goal needs to be, okay, I'm gonna get my natural, I'm gonna get a couple units at the beginning, but my main priority is to tech up. Now, alright, I've spent money, my gas, on the Cybocore Warp Gate. I'm getting my second Stalker, yeah. And I'm gonna poke around with this. And I should be making... Yeah, I just noticed this finish, so I'm making workers, I'm rallying everything over here. If you see anything in the red, you should, like, immediately click it, bring it down here. And this is why we use... I wish I could demonstrate it here, but this is why we use camera hotkeys. And if you don't know how camera hotkeys work, I'll go over it real quick. Go over to options, hotkeys, global, and then camera. Now, there's a couple of different ways you could do this. First of all, base camera. When you start a new account, I'm pretty sure it's defaulted to the backspace. If you don't already have it set to space, put it on space. Because that's... You can reach it with your fingers, okay? It's about making things as accessible to your fingers as possible. Right? And then you go down here. I believe this is like control plus F1 in the beginning. Let me see. Hopefully I can just cancel and it'll go back to normal. Yeah, I okay. So you're gonna go over here, hold down shift, and F1. Why shift as opposed to using the control? Because just try to press it with your, your fingers on your keyboard. It's a lot harder to reach the control and F1, right? Unless you have like super long fingers. Shift plus F1, while not exactly easy to reach, is not nearly as hard to reach as control. And I suppose it can come down to the person, like, you may or may not want to do shift plus F1. You might do, I don't know, something random, like... Can I actually use the caps key in F1? What about tab in F1? No. <laughs> well, whatever. The point is, set up your create location hotkeys in a way that is convenient and easy for you to reach. And we go back in here. Unit management. What I see some people do is they'll... See, control... F1. Is what they have for idle worker. And then when they want to select all army units. This is of course defaulted to F2. But you can hold down... Go down here and do that instead. And now, like, the option is still there. The thing is, like... It doesn't really matter too much in, like, low-level league, because it's pretty much as simple as making units and then A-moving. But, um... You don't want to necessarily pull all of your units in one spot, because, like, what if you're getting dropped? You know, sometimes you want to leave units behind. Or maybe your Zerg, you want to leave Zerglings on these bases... ...to, like, check to see if your opponent is expanding. And obviously, if you use the Army Select hotkey... You'll be pulling everything away. Now, anyways, back on topic. We're gonna stare at this production tab. <clears throat> Still making workers. Right now, I have 29 to 24. Pretty good. And yeah, I poked around. And, you know, I harassed a little bit. But when I realized I was outnumbered, I don't spend too much time on it. And this is something I want to demonstrate, alright? Especially in bronze, you really don't need to worry too much about... like, harassing. And don't stare at the scout too long. Like, here I'm checking for a first, uh, uh, his first expansion. 
I'm doing a little bit of kiting micro, but kite a bit, turn around. Like, I get in, like, maybe two autos there, and then I immediately turn around. Because I'm like, I don't want to lose the stalker, because it's my first unit. And this isn't, this isn't fucking Heart of the Swarm, where you just make a mothership for and you're instantly defended from all forms of basic harass. No, 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 it's a little bit more skill-based than that. Now, why do I make an immortal here? Part of the reason is, like, okay, generally speaking, when you see a natural base here, I did not actually see into his base, because I didn't want to suicide the stalker. So, at this point, I'm kind of under the impression of, he's probably going to pressure me. So, what I do here is, usually when you get your Robo-Bay, the first thing you should make is an Observer. However, if you already have reason to suspect that you're going to get attacked early... It is not a terrible choice to get an Immortal. Part of the reason why I get an Immortal here is because my gas count is really, really high anyway. And then I go for a Twilight Council. Why do I get a Twilight Council? Because... And I'm pretty sure I'm going to make another Stalker here just to be safe. Okay, well I'm going to wait on Warp Gate. I get a Shield Battery because I'm like, okay, I'm a little bit nervous of what the Terran player could be doing here. I'm going to make a few more Stalkers just in case. And whenever you're having trouble spending gas or, you know, your mineral income is already decent as is, that's generally around the time you should be throwing down more gateways. You know, like if you're constantly producing and it's still not spending all your money, that's how I benchmark. I'm like, okay, I should probably get gateways here. And then after the fact and replay, you can be like, okay, maybe I can get my gateway a little bit earlier. And here comes my first Immortal, constantly producing, and around the time this is capped out is when I grab these two extra gases. And you can make an argument for going for... Okay, I only have one warp gate right now. Getting sentries is not terrible here, and that was actually a misclick, by the way. I did not mean to make a zealot. I think I wanted to make a stalker there, but I fucking fat-fingered. Now remember what I said in the composition video. Generally what you want against Terran, especially if they're going bio, is Zealot Archon. And if we look at this, like I mentioned, Stalkers are good for early game defense. Immortals are also good for early game defense and they can help add in some extra DPS to like taking down structures or stationary targets like tanks or marauders. We look at this, 18 damage to armored. 15 armored. But again, these are not units you want to rely on alone when it comes to Terran Bio, because like once Medivax and once Stimpak kicks in, that is when the DPS starts to get insane. And yeah, you want Zealot Archon against Terran, so I got my Robo Bay, which is mostly, it's purely a defensive move. We're probably going to go ahead and get a support bay, a Robo support bay eventually, but you don't have to rush it, depending on exactly what you want to do. Now, in my experience, personally, in terms of, like, efficiently spending your resources, I like Twilight, the, uh, Templar Archives. Because look at this, alright? 100 minerals on the Zealot, 150 gas on High Templar. As long as you have enough gateways, you can, like, constantly produce Zealots to spend your, uh, minerals, and then pretty much only spend gas. Very little amounts of minerals on your Templar. That adds you the ability to get Archons, which are really good at face tanking damage and adding in some DPS. And they act as decent anti-air. It's not really the kind of anti-air you want to rely on, it depends, but it's something. And of course, Psionic Storm. But yeah, like, if you don't want to go Templar Archives early on, you don't necessarily have to. I would make an argument that generally you should try to get speed, regardless of whether you're going early Robotech or going for Templar Archives. Because Zealots are good fucking units when they have the charge enabled. And you don't have to... You know what? I probably should have gotten Psionic Storm faster than I did. But I was a little bit nervous. I'm like, okay, what if Terran attacked me here? That would be kind of awkward, no? Around six minutes is when I get my forges. Is when the upgrades start to kick in. 
This is pretty much when Terrence starts his upgrades, too. Now, hindsight hero. This was a bad move out. Why is it a bad move out? Because I don't have a single observer on the map. I'm thinking about moving out, because I'm like, oh, I got a bunch of Archons and Immortals and Zealots. Charge is done. Which is part of what encourages me to move out here, because I'm like, yeah, I should have a decent power spike here. But the thing is, like, I don't know the armies here. And generally speaking, when you're moving out as Protoss, even a low elo, it's a good habit to build up. Warp Prism. This makes it so that you can reinforce your army, and you don't have to build everything home. Because that can be pretty awkward. Now, expanding when you're, like, applying pressure is generally a good habit. But in this particular game, you want to make sure you have observers on the map. You want to know where your opponent is. I realize that these are like super high complicated things I'm describing. But I want to try to get it out of the way because this is just how I play. Yeah, some awkward rallying. If I had an observer here, I would have been able to easily see this. And I may not have even gone up that ramp as early as I did because I would have noticed, oh, he has plus one and my upgrades are not yet finished. Which is something I didn't even think about. Yeah, actually, my plus one plus one happens to kick in. I wasn't thinking about it at the time, but it happens to kick in immediately as soon as I go up here. This is... Really, this is a terrible fucking angle anyway. Like, when you know your opponent's there, or even if you don't know, like, you need information. You can't just blindly walk up ramps. Now... This Terran player, this AI, decided to get a bunch of ghosts early, which is quite the meme. Because it's not something you would see often. But I don't actually trade that poorly into it. Like, I almost win the fight. And if we look at the supply, despite losing that fight, I'm still ahead in terms of supply. And look at that. Holy fucking shit, dude. How long into this game are we right now? Nine minutes and two seconds. 72 workers. That's a fucking epic game of moment right there. Now I'm gonna try to simplify the conversation as much as I can. Um, I'm not doing the scripted, I'm kinda like doing it as I go along, making up as I go along. Always think about the game in terms of what you need to set up. Don't do one base stuff, it's a bad idea. Probably in every matchup, probably even PvP. It definitely is against Zerg and Terran. I definitely have to play some PvP, I haven't actually done PvP in like a year or so. The meta is always changing. Now, even though I lost that fight, the game is not necessarily over. However, in retrospect, I really should have gotten batteries here. Because if this was a better Terran player, or a more aggressive player, he could have like, dropped and harassed. I do have cannons here, which I believe I actually had that when I moved out. Yeah. I don't move out until I have cannons at least started. Right? Or I build it around the time that I move out. A good habit when you're deciding, like, okay, when should I move out, Booty? What's a good timing? Do you have information on the map? Do you know where your opponent's army is? What happens if... He drops you. You have to put yourself in your opponent's shoes. If I move out, and I happen to get dropped at the same time, what am I gonna do? And this is something I fuck up even in Diamond League, because I get greedy, and I get lazy about my, uh, my scouting. This is actually... Yeah, I'm pretty sure at this point you can tell this is just a terrible time to move out in general. I do have recall, but if he drops more than one spot, like, that doesn't necessarily save me. And I really should move out at least, like, when these cannons are just about to finish. Or I have a good reason to suspect he's not going to do a drop. So hindsight hero, I should have waited for Psionic Storm. I should have built up some um, High Templar here. And this is a good example of like why, yeah, gateway armies can be good. But you don't want to necessarily rely on them. This is why splash damage is important. Now obviously, this is a bad angle anyway. So, like, you could argue if I came in from both angles, it probably would have been cleaner, but even then, like... It's a good habit to wait on splash damage, and Archons are support units. They are not gonna 
101 a Terran player. They're just not. They're not even gonna 101 a fucking Zerg player. Because eventually, like, when they have decent numbers like that, they have, like, a decent angle on you, like, Concave wins, you know? And I should have transferred these units over earlier than I did, all these probes. But yeah, like, after I realized that, I'm like, okay. In fact, let's look at that fight. Because I want to know exactly what I was looking at during that fight. I should be making units here, some probes. When I saw how bad this was, I should have immediately turned around. And I should have been making probes while that was happening. I did not in this game. But still. And after that fight is over, or I decide, like, okay, this clearly isn't going to work out, I start my plus two, plus two upgrades. Which is ahead of the Terran right now. Like, he hasn't even finished his 1-1 yet. And you don't want to panic when that situation happens, alright? You go back to square one, because, like, even though it's a bad fight, I'm still ahead in supply. It's not the end of the world. I have three bases. I decide, okay... I gotta set up my gas geysers here. And if you're a little bit confused on like when you're teching up and you're you're thinking to yourself, okay, when should I expand? Usually as soon as you get like your first bit of tech up, you whether it's Archons or the Colossus or what have you, that's a and you know, you have vision of your opponent and you know he's not gonna like do a do two base timing or something. That's usually a good timing to expand, in my experience. It's a case-by-case -case thing. But you don't want to sit in two bases for too long. Alright? By the way, in case you didn't know, move the cursor to the top right, under the supply, or on the supply count, 80 workers. And it also tells you your army supply, 24. And 80 workers is exactly as many pros as you want as Protoss. Or really in general, like even as Zerg. Some people get 90 drones, but 80 is generally a good count. It's usually where people stop. And you know, I, I'm gonna demonstrate a little drop here. Because it's one thing you can do, like if you take a bad fight and you want to buy yourself time, you could harass with this. But try not to lose the War Prism, of course. I get my Robo Support Bay. Because I'm like, okay, he has ghosts already, and while Psionic Storm's good, he can technically counter me. So I need to have some other tech ready. And I decide, like, aside from this Warp Prism, I'm going to play it passive. I'm building up a high count of High Templar, getting my Storm ready, if I need to. <laughs> kind of hurt dirt my way awkwardly into some fucking, um units. I don't think I was looking. No, I wasn't looking, which is why that warp prism gets caught. I could have gotten out of it. I'm kind of curious exactly how many workers I killed. 21. What the fuck? That's a lot more than I thought I did. Didn't even look that effective. I guess the AI is derping. And... Usually, I would say, one, two, three, four, five, about five High Templar is about, that's as much as you want. That gives you plenty of DPS with Psionic Storm. And you'll notice, like, whenever I make new units, I'm adding them to the first hotkey. And I'm going to be getting my Colossus Rain soon, it's super cheap. Okay, I'm hyper-focused on getting High Templar. So, that's not actually a fuck-up, I remember this. I made an active decision of like, okay, I could get Thermal Lance, but I'm gonna wait on that a little bit. And now I get it. I decide to Chrono Boost it, because I want as much DPS as I can work with. And now I'm getting a healthy count of Zella Archon, I'm almost maxed out. I have 91 probes, which is actually a lot more than I need. But honestly, as far as like, macro problems, that's a good problem to have. 
it is better to have a little bit too many probes versus not even coming close to 80. Or, like, forgetting that's even a fucking gameplay mechanic. And I believe around this time is when I notice, oh, wait, I actually have too many probes. Now, you could kill... Yeah, I think I actually killed some probes. Okay, yeah, I blocked my Archon, which is hilarious. You should be careful when you're putting down your pylons. What you can usually do is, like, have a stack of them, like a row of them here. You won't be able to, like, cover as many spots in the base, but... It makes it harder for you to, like, accidentally block your units. Don't do that, people! Don't do that, kids! And I should be transferring my probes here. Yeah, I do. I'm moving them over to my fourth base, setting up the hotkey. Do I even have an observer? No, I don't. Oh yeah, I realized the High Templar are further behind my army than I thought. Yeah, be careful about that. You want your High Templar nearby when this happens. And make sure you have an observer with your army just in case there's invisible units. Because imagine this guy sniping or even EMPing all these High Templar. This would be a pretty bad engagement. And I win it, but it's not pretty. It's definitely not pretty. And I don't know why the fuck there's SCVs in here. <laughs> but there you go. Okay, here comes my army. I'm like, yeah, I'm maxed out. And that's another good timing. If you want to be aggressive, wait until you're maxed out. If you really want to be safe about it. What I should have done is, first of all, absolutely lazy about observer production in this game. Have an observer, make sure you know where your opponent is, because you don't want to get caught with your pants down. If I saw this here, I could have put my armor here, put my High Templar, like, kind of in the back. And I notice it. I engage here because I don't realize my High Templar are over here. And eventually I do realize I'm like, oh shit, wait, hold on. Time out, time out, AI, give me a second. And I use, um, force fields to try to lock down the army, but it's not very good force fields. And I pretty much just went off that. No matter how confident you get in your supply count, your tech, or you're super ahead, even if it looks like you're most likely going to win, always think in terms of the next step. Think to yourself, if I don't win the game here, what will I have to do to win the game later? And that's, that's a good habit to form in my experience. Not, how do I win now? How do I win later? And you know what? If I happen to kill my opponent, cool. Okay, awesome. I ended the game earlier than I thought I would. That's a nice meme. And when I say think of what can you do to win later, put down more gateways when you see your mineral count getting too high for you to spend. Uh, grab extra bases. Always assume the game will continue, even if it's unlikely in low elo. Because I've lost many a game because I get fucking lazy about my macro. Oh, I'm gonna win. I don't need to think anymore. I don't need to macro. I'm fucking done. Sometimes you'll get games where you like that, but what if you're wrong? It is better. Trust me. Okay, it's not worth the risk. And just some colossi. Look at that fucking edgy, badass profile picture. Just some colossi to, like, support your army, not too many. Depends on how many Vikings you have and how many... Well, how many Vikings the opponent has. Or Corruptors or whatever. Try to mix and match your damage. With, like, Colossi and Psionic Storm. And then you can have Zealot Archon, like... Absorbing the brunt of the damage, alright? And I think that's about it for the practice game. And real quick, we're going to be doing some real games against real people. Well, you'll be you'll be able to see in real time like how I build up my army. And your plan when you go into ranked as a low level player doesn't need to be very complicated, very simplistic. Our goals is first of all get 50 workers by the five minute mark. Always, every game, no matter what happens. In a way, I'd argue it's easier. As Terran and Zerg, or excuse me, Terran and Protoss. Because, uh... 
You don't have to like pick and choose when you want to make workers and when you want to make units and shit like that. But anyway, we can rally our first probe out over here. Make sure you're constantly making workers as much as you possibly can, but do not use Chrono Boost. We can set up our second base hotkey if we want to, third, fourth. Okay, so I actually did that a little earlier than I needed to, because I panicked. But regardless. And you know what, whenever you're playing in low elo, like, up until you get to diamond, you don't need to play perfectly. Well, even in diamond league, like, people mess up all the time and make little macro mistakes. Put those guys there. And throw down another Chrono Boost. Get our second pylon up. And we're gonna try to not get our uh, second Gas Geyser until we have our... Natural setup first. And 21, we're gonna be going for that Natural. So right now, we're not using any Chrono Boost. We're going to move down to expand, and try to use up whatever minerals your probe happens to have in its mouth when you move down. 280 minerals is generally around the time you want to move down. And now, what we can do is get our second gas geyser going. And this should time out in such a way that we can get in the depth immediately, and it'll be out and ready by the time the Reaper comes out. And we got Warp Gate as well. And let's see, now we can get our Robo Bay next up, since we have 100 gas there. And that's usually how I organize everything. It's just in terms of looking at my gas count, looking at my mineral count, and thinking, what's the next step that I need? And I said earlier on, our general plan against Terran is Zealot Archon, right? Therefore, what we want to do is get Zealot Archon. You'll get our Twilight Council, but we're going to get a Robo Bay first. Because it's generally the safer bet, you know? And we can move down this Adept. Now, in case you're wondering why exactly we're opting to... And try not to get, like, overly distracted either. Like me. <laughs> Make sure that you're moving your units down, and just keep them, like, over here. And do not stop making workers as much as you can help it. We're gonna get out some stalkers, as I said earlier. And a Twilight Council. And since we have all this leftover money, we might as well... Let's see, where is my other... Okay, there it is. So we're gonna keep this here. We're gonna rally all our shit down. Put down some pylons. I should have done this earlier, honestly. And then we can get another observer just in case. And since we're supply blocked, which is no bueno. Might as well put down a couple extra. That way we're at the ready. And we're gonna keep our stalkers here. Hockey that. And you're always gonna be thinking, like, okay, what's the next step? I'm gonna need another gas geyser. And I'm gonna need my charge. We get a few stalkers to defend ourselves against any possible liberator timings. But it doesn't look like our opponent is really gonna be doing that. At all. He's playing very passively. Very, very passively. So in that case, what we should do is get... Let's see. He could get a planetary here, but for the time being, let's just assume... Actually, we can just expand off this. Wait, what? Oh, that's a very weird build. But again, not getting too distracted. We can get an immortal, because it would spend our money. You know, it's better to spend your money a little inefficiently versus not doing it at all.
Even if they're units, you don't technically want, like, in the mid-game phase. Now, what was I saying? Oh yeah, we're gonna need Psionic Storm. We're gonna have this coming up soon. And since we have so much money, let's look. We got 56 workers at the 5 minute 49 second mark, which is pretty good. And since our opponent is playing so passive, we might as well... Oh, what? That's... What the fuck? Very weird build for my opponent. And since he's going for a lot of Reapers, we might as well get as many, um... Adepts as we possibly can, honestly. And I didn't... I underestimated exactly how many units he would be making. Now, we're gonna win this anyway. And I guess he proxied, yeah. And again, we're still making units. And in case you're wondering, like, is it inefficient to go for, like, more... Yeah. If you're wondering if it's inefficient to, like, keep building workers even when you're maxed out on here, it doesn't matter. You want 80 workers as soon as you possibly can. And it's okay. Now, obviously, this was a weird build for my opponent, so not really the best example. <laughs> I guess, in retrospect, when I noticed he had nothing here other than an eBay, I should have been like, yeah, that's kind of... bizarre. But there you go, that's game one. And hopefully we can get a more passive build so that we can get a better idea of, uh... What kind of late-game units we want, mid-game units. Now, I did turn down the graphics a little bit to make sure the frame rate is nice and solid for our purposes. Anyway, let's start up another game and see where it goes. And, um... Yeah, low elo is kind of a shit show. Sometimes you'll get games that are super passive and your opponent will turtle. Sometimes you'll get a game where people will, like, try to cheese you. But regardless, stay focused on your goal. Zealot Archon. Zealot Archon. You can probably make it all the way up to Diamond with just Zealot Archon, honestly. With, like, High Templar support, some Immortal support thrown in there. And, you know, sprinkle a few Stalkers here and there. Depending on the, uh, the matchup. And surprisingly, the, the queue times are decently long in low elo. I remember them being shorter. I guess not as many people play. Or, or maybe everyone is, like, higher up the elo. I don't know. Alright, PBZ. Let's see if we can survive the inevitable Zerg Rush, because that's probably what our opponent is going to do. But don't, like, tunnel vision on it. Now, I haven't actually walled off against a Zerg player in a really long time as Protoss. I'm very used to how it works as Terran, so... I gotta memorize that. And we're gonna be moving this probe over here. And this is like a decent walled off spot. Yeah, fucking mouth is sticky. Cause I've been drinking a lot of coffee today. Oh my god, Booty, please, why do you do this? I'm gonna be trying to get my Gas Geyser at 17 instead. Or, you know, next time I have the money. 75? Yeah. That's a good timing. Now, one thing I didn't really think about because I was, uh, talking is... Try not to build stuff, like, when you have the money. Try to build it... Like, have your probe in the position, you know what I mean? Now I could put my next pylon over here. Technically you want it on the low ground, but um, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world in this case. How did this work? I believe it's like right here. Can my probe go through there? Yes, it can. What I can do is I can make a zealot here just to be safe. And at 280, I might as well move it down now. I can move my probe down. Things are a little bit more delayed this time around. And assuming you have everything at the correct timing, what you can do with this... ...is you can hold off any kind of, like, weird timing from your opponent. 
Let's see if we can build a stalker to deny scouting. Oh. Oh my god. I'm a fucking jackass. I forgot to hold position. Now, in this position, make sure you're still making workers. You can right-click on the minerals and, like, maximize your DPS. And then we can move everything back into position. I got pretty hardcore distracted there, but regardless, we're going to be going for a robo-bay just like normal, because we're going to be using it to scout. And I do have this on the hold position, so now I don't really have to worry about anything. Now, you can right-click on a mineral patch, and it'll go, it'll go through the units. See, let's watch this. There we go. And now what I can do is I can set my first pylon this way. And rally everything to my natural. And this will be finished soon. I can keep making adepts for the time being since I'm a little bit more scared. Because once Zerg gets speed, he can easily, like, wreck everything. Now, we're not really doing a lot of scouting. Uh, scouting is important to a degree, but in bronze to silver, uh, not so much. We can get our Twilight Council, get another gateway here to defend ourselves. And we can go ahead and get a second... Observer, just in case. And we can put our pylon down, like, right here. And just like that, we have plenty of money to afford our resources. We can get some sentries, because it'll, it'll spend our gas income... We can hockey this to three, for instance, just see what the, our opponent is doing exactly. And at six minutes, we're going to be getting our upgrade. So for the time being, we should try to get more stalkers into the mix. Now let's see. Double Evo, super early into the game. Really, really fucking early. Jesus. He's got a lair. Maybe he'll be going for mutas. That's something to keep in mind. Or he could be going for, like, simple roach timings. Well, I say timing, it's not really a fucking timing, is it? <clears throat> Get another one of these, and let's go ahead and... Let's see, I gotta put down more pylons. Grab this. I think that's a spire. That looks tiny enough to be a spire. Now we can get our double forges. Some people put them in the natural. I don't mind putting them in the main every now and then. And yeah, that is indeed a spire. Now, don't panic in this situation. Please don't. Now, this is bronze, so I don't really have to care too much about getting phoenixes, because I'm pretty sure I'll be able to beat out my opponent regardless. Some double forges... And yeah, I accidentally blocked... Well, I didn't really accidentally block my Immortal. That's, like, just kind of part of the build, unfortunately. Let's see, Templar Archive is going to be finished soon. Now, what I can do here is, since I know that Mutas are coming, I can put down a couple cannons in each mineral line, or at least, like, a cannon and a battery. In fact, that's probably a better idea overall. And then get my upgrades going, Chrono Boost that shit... And now, I can get some Archons to, like, really complement my force. I don't have to rush for Psionic Storm this early into the game, I really don't. <clears throat> I can put that there. And lastly, I know there's gonna be some mutas over here, going for this.
Now, let's go ahead and... Oh, actually, it looks like he's going to be pushing for us super early. Check to see if he has a third. Go ahead and combine these two... ...units. And don't panic, you know? So you can't even touch us. It's not even close. Use some force fields to offset some of the damage. And just off of raw macro, without even having like a super complicated composition, we've already like completely beaten our opponent out. Now we can take our third. And I'm pretty comfortable in this position. I, I don't think it's likely that he's going to be going to try to harass us too much with mutas, because he completely requires mutas at this point. Let's see, upgrade this. And thinking in terms of like our next step. We're gonna need that. We're gonna need more upgrades. We're gonna need more gateways to complement our army. And apparently we're out of mana entirely. <coughs> we can get our sign on storm. Go ahead and grab this. And without too much micro involved, we've already, like, outplayed the Zerg player. And we got 68 workers, 9 minutes 30 seconds to the game. Probably could have been better. And one thing I didn't really talk about is you want to get some warp prisms for, like, the mid-game phase. That way you could, uh, build units quickly. And yeah, I definitely have to work on... Let's see, my walling off strategy, because this isn't great. Like, it worked fine in this game, but... Can I see what upgrades he got? Plus one carapace. We've got plus one, plus one. He, yeah, he got plus one, plus one. So we're actually pretty even in that respect, but I guess he did get it, like, pretty early. Oh, no. Did I get promoted too early? <laughs> okay, never mind. It's bronze one. We're fine, boys. We're fine. We're probably not going to last in this elo too long, honestly, this rate.